Good evening, my fellow exorcists, and welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. Tonight, we will be taking a look at Netflix. I am not okay with this. A teenager navigates the complexities of high school family and her sexuality while dealing with new superpowers based on Charles For Forsman's graphic novel of the same name. Now let's move on to my opinion. Okay, so Netflix better bring this series back for a second season soon. I mean, their bullshit excuse of COVID prevented them from making the second season is completely bullshit, especially when most of the movies that came out in 2020 and 2021 were still being worked on during the pandemic, and some of them are pretty good. So, there is really no excuse for them to cancel the second season. But really, despite how short the show's episodes are, they're still really good. I mean, they feel like a shorter version of Stranger Things, except much darker, and instead of revolving around a group of kids, it revolves around one teenager who's going through hell when she finds out she has superpowers. So, pretty much, it's Carrie, but much more realistic. I mean, one, the main protagonist constantly fights with her mother because their relationship was so strained due to how much her mother works, and because of her father's recent death. Two, she actually has a crush on someone who is with someone else, which is very relatable for most of us modern protagonists out here, who constantly fall in love with someone knowing or not knowing that they're with another person. I mean, this is why I was so disappointed that they cancelled the second season last year, because this show is really good despite taking most of its inspiration from a single graphic novel. I also like the idea that Sydney doesn't just know how to control her powers from the start. It takes her a while to figure it out thanks to her neighbor and confident, confidant, Stan, who does everything in his power to try and help her figure out her new abilities and keep them a secret from both her school and her family. And he's also, I mean, he was kind of a love interest in a sort of awkward way where they and he was her first kiss and her first sexual encounter, and it got kind of weird, but now they're kind of friends and acquainted. Well, not friends, but acquaintances. Um, but yeah. I also love how the first episode and the second episode pretty much... I mean, the first episode and the last episode pretty much ends the same way, leaving us with both a cliffhanger, giving us very heavy Carrie vibes. Except, unlike Carrie... Sydney didn't mean to kill anyone, bullies and hedgehogs alike. I also love how instead of leaving the origins of her powers ambiguous, they make up with they came up with something so brilliant as her father giving it to her. And this also gives us the idea that maybe her brother will find out that he has the same powers as them when he hits puberty. Oh, and I love how the detention episode also kind of felt like a reference to The Breakfast Club, except this time it's the slut, a jock, a telekinetic teenager. Thanks, James A. Janice from Dead Meat for putting that in my head after you did uh, Friday the 13th Part 7 with the telekinetic teenager. <laughs> um, a popular girl and a nerd. Which, now that I am saying it out loud, doesn't really sound too different. But I can also say that it's my favorite episode because of the antics that take place, and it gives us the feeling that Sydney was being watched. And I mean, they're not wrong. So let's get to the film score. Ha! <laughs> to my surprise, I found this Netflix original series to be very interesting, and a very original concept, but I was also a bit disappointed! with how short the episodes were, and even the whole series itself was. I felt it deserved a lot more time on Netflix, but I guess we'll have to see what fate decides. I mean, they can't just leave it at seven episodes. Seven short episodes. Um, on top of that, I also kind of felt a bit disappointed at the lack of an actual LGBTQ relationship. I mean, the most we got was an uncomfortable kiss at a party, and a confession, which was interrupted by the big climax at the end of episode 7. So I guess I'm gonna have to give this series a film score of 6 out of 10. Anyways, 
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and click the little notification bell for more of our content. And have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. And look out for those telekinetic teenagers. They're gonna get you.